In this video here, it's going to be dealing with some building some concepts. The computations aren't super advanced, but the concepts are actually quite important in building the foundation for the rest of the unit that we'll be working on. And so let's consider a car that travels for four hours at 80 kilometers an hour. I go for one hour, two hours, three hours, four hours, and this distance, the speed is 80 kilometers an hour. And so how much distance was traveled? Well, if I take four hours, and I multiply it by 80 kilometers per hour. Well, that's how I find my distance, which is going to be 320. Which, if I think about this, is a height of 80. This is 4. That is representing the area underneath this curve. And so the area underneath the velocity curve is distance. So there's an interesting relationship that exists between a function and the area. And, but the problem is, rarely do I get this beautiful straight line function. Oftentimes my function looks like a curve. So if I consider this contrived situation, and I've made this function f of x is equal to 4 minus x squared. Okay, I've done that, and I say that a person starts at time 0 at 4, and he was walking at 4 kilometers per hour, and by the time two hours is up, he's tired and he's stopped at zero kilometers an hour. And I want to find the area underneath here. But I don't actually, because it's curve, I don't have a way of doing that. And so what we can do is we can start to actually estimate it. And to estimate, I'm going to draw a little rectangle here. And I'm going to draw another rectangle here. I'm going to draw another rectangle. I'm going to draw four rectangles. The reason why I'm checking four is because I've contrived it again. It works out quite nicely. Okay, and clearly this is going to be an overestimate of the true area. And so I'm going to call this the upper sum. And so the upper sum, what it does is it takes this distance here, 0 0.5, times the height here. So it's 0 0.5, the, dis the distance between the x's, times f at 0. And then I'm going to go 0 0.5 times f at 0 0.5 plus 0 0.5, which is this distance here, times the height at f at 1. And again, 0 0.5 times the height at 1.5, which is my last rectangle here. And then I'm just going to calculate it. I'm going to factor out my 0 0.5. And then I need all of these values here, four of them. And I'm going to add them up. To find them relatively quickly, if I go to y equals, I've put the function in already. And if I go to my table, I start. Um, this table starting at 15 and it's going by 1. So that's not very helpful because I want to start at 0 and go by 0 0.5. So if I change my window set, which is the blue above window, second window set, I'm going to start it at 0, and my change is going to be 0 0.5. Enter. And then if I go to my table, I have all my values. So f at 0 is 4 plus a 3.75 plus a 3 plus a 1.5. 7, 5. And if I add these all together, if I add this and multiply, I'm going to get the sum of all these rectangles here. So it's 0 0.5 times, well, 4 plus 3 is 7, 7 plus a 3.75 plus a 1.75 gives me a grand total of 6.25. So I know the actual area is less than 6.25. And that's an approximation of the upper sum. So there's the upper sum. Imagine that I come along and I'm going to do the lower sum. I'm going to do all these values here underneath the curve. Oh, here's the rectangle and then at 0. And I'm going to add these ones up and that would be my lower sum. And so I would know that the true area the true area is between, not less than, is between the upper sum, the upper sum, we'll call it, and the lower sum. 
That's where the true area exists. And so what I'm really doing is I am taking the area is approximately the sum of these rectangles. I'm going to take I and I'm going to do um, N rectangles and I know that I'm going to take my function, whatever my function is for I, this is this value here, all of them, I'm going to add them up and I'm going to multiply it times the change in X which is this distance here and I'm going to add them up and that will find me, when I do that, it will find me a good estimate for the area. But let's take this even further. I have A and B as at this point. I have this function, which is our function. N is four, means I'm gonna have four rectangles. And I have a left midpoint, okay? And so if I have my four rectangles here, okay, I can clearly see that the sum here is 6.25. That's my upper sum. If I take it and move the point over, I could get all these different rectangles are possible. I calling my lower sum, this one, 4.25. So my lower sum was 4.25. And so the true value is between these two numbers is what this is saying. I could also do what's called a midpoint. Sometimes that is helpful where I use the midpoint between the two, but there's different calculations to do, but it's all the same premise. And these are my areas that I get. But as opposed to looking at the different areas depending upon where I make my height of my rectangles, my other option is if I make more rectangles. And that's what happens here. When I make more rectangles, the error missing, and maybe this is easier to see it, when I have this, there's a lot of missing error. When I go larger and larger and larger, more rectangles, that error gets so minuscule. And my actual sum of all these rectangles gets closer and closer and closer to the true value of the area. And so what happens is if I take this area, what I want to do, and to make lots of rectangles, I make the difference, the change in x down here, small. So what I do is I want to take what we call the limit as delta x, the change in x goes to zero. Okay, that in essence means the ends go to infinity. And when I take delta x, taking this value to zero, I get the actual true area. And we change our notation. When we've taken it out to zero, I, I elongate the s for sum, and it's gonna go from my first value to my last value. So like from a to b, of my function f of x, and I'm gonna say d of x. And this is the d of x getting, the chain is getting super small. It is also the same d of x in dy dx. There's a definite connection coming eventually. And this here is what we call the area function. This elongated s we call an integral, but because we're making delta x go really close to zero, we're doing an infinite amount of rectangles, we have the integral, and this is what we call the area function. And so when you see the integral symbol, it's really just the area function we're considering. Now the last thing I do want to talk about though, is um, let me make this back to normal rectangles we can see. What's also true is, because it's delta x times the height, what happens when I go to the other side of the, notice what happens in my areas. My areas become, you can see, as you can see, my area here becomes negative. And so what's true is if I'm below the curve, my area is negative. That's because my height is based upon the function which means it's a negative area. And so the other thing you want to need to consider is so above the curve, above the curve, I'm sorry, above the x-axis, above the x-axis, above the x-axis, area is positive. And below the x-axis, 
the area is negative. And so when we do this, they actually subtract each other out. And you can see here that the area is actually getting closer to zero. And so it's possible to say that together they cancel each other out. Um, so we have to be aware of how it actually calculates area. And it's actually a signed area, means a positive and a negative.